Now, let us learn the effects of human activities on ecosystem. In previous classes, we have learned about different types of pollutions caused to the ecosystem due to human interference. Here, we shall try to understand the harmful effects on organisms at each tropic level caused due to cutting down the forests, polluting water sources and how this affects organisms of each tropic level. Let us talk about Koledu Lake to learn and to understand the components of our environment, their interactions and effects of human interference. Story of Koledu Lake Freshwater lakes fulfill the nutritional requirements of the world's poorest population. One such type of lake is Koleru Lake. It is one of the largest freshwater lakes in India. It is located between West Godavari and Krishna districts of Andhra Pradesh. The area of the lake extends up to 6,121 square kilometer. The excess water from Koleru Lake flows into Bay of Bengal through a channel called Uputeru, which is about 65 km long. In November 1999, the government of Andhra Pradesh declared the Koleru Lake as bird sanctuary under the India's Wildlife Protection Act. Because this lake hosts 193 species of birds and a variety of flora and fauna along with some medicinal plants. During the months of October and March every year, it attracts large number of migratory birds from Australia, Siberia, Egypt and Philippines. The estimated number of birds in these months is 20 lakhs and includes species like panbill storks, painted storks, glossy ibises, white ibises, teals, pintails, shovelers, red-crested poachers, black-winged stilts, avocets, common red shanks, vigians, gadwalls and cormorants among others. But from the last few decades, this largest sweetwater lake is facing great threat due to pollution. This was revealed by satellite pictures. The decrease in water area and muddy ground in the lake resulted in flooding problems in the lake area. Now, let us observe and compare the area of lake in the year 1967 and 2004. The table shown on the screen gives the area of lake in the year 1967 and 2004. Aquaculture in Koleru Lake started extensively in the year 1980, which later spread to the other areas of Krishna Godavari Deltas. In the year 1996, almost entire lake was brought under cultivation and bunts were constructed to store the water for the protection of crops. This deviation has affected the natural flow of lake. In a short period of time, agriculture and aqua industry has grown rapidly in the catchment area of the lake. As a result of this, the pollutants from agriculture containing agrochemicals, fertilizers and industrial wastes containing chemical residues and different types of organic substances and municipal and domestic sewage have entered the lake through drains, exit point for wastewater and rivulets stream of water. The excessive addition of nutrients, especially from anthropogenic sources, led to explosive growth of weed. Example, Ecornia. The water of the lake turned more alkaline in nature, turbid, nutrient-rich, low in dissolved oxygen, TVO, high in biochemical oxygen demand, POD, due to this explosive weed. As a result of this, the local inhabitants suffered from the waterborne diseases like diarrhea, typhoid, amoebiasis and others and vector-borne diseases such as viruses. Prawns and fishes have been found to be affected by several diseases due to the lands being abandoned. These abandoned lands are useless for agriculture also. The table on the screen shows different activities in the lake and their influence. To protect the lake, the Ministry of Environment and Forest and the Government of India constituted a committee called Operation of Koleru. 
The main objective of this program is to bring back the ecological balance of Koleru Lake which is a gift of nature. When a food crop is cultivated by cutting down the forest, it results in replacement of a naturally established ecosystem having number of species with monoculture that is an unnatural concentration of a single crop. When the crops are grown in large concentrations, then food is also obtained in rich quantities. This situation in turn helps the pests and parasites like fungi to grow on this. Toxic chemicals like pesticides, herbicides and fungicides are used to eliminate these pests and parasites. Most of these chemicals will be very effective but they in turn create new problems. The perfect pesticide is one which destroys the pests and do not cause any harm to other forms of life. Let us learn how pesticides affect food chain and food web. When we spray the pesticides on a crop, not only the pests but a vast number of living organisms are also destroyed. Some of these include predators which feed on these pests. Others may be the prey for other animals. This leads to unpredictable changes in food chain, thus affecting the balance within the ecosystem. Some of the pesticides and herbicides are degradable, that is they broke down into harmless substances in a very short period of time, usually a year. Others are non-degradable and are potentially dangerous. They include mercury, arsenic or lead. They accumulate into the bodies of animals and flow through the food web. If we concentrate on the food web at each step, the animals present at the top of the tropic level receive considerable harm. The process of entry of pollutants into food chain is called bioaccumulation. The tendency of pollutants to concentrate as they move from one tropic level to another is called biomagnification.